Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, YouTube? So, welcome to the Ox build over there for the Broken Warcraft build. Now, we're gonna go over four games. Uh, first game is gonna have no lore. Second game, we have Ruins and Sheep, the Ruins Shipwreck. Uh, but the usual build order is pretty much get three woodcutters and try to get scout towers down and after that try to get altar as fast as possible and that's it nothing less nothing more so let's get into the games and yeah let's see maybe to say what uh, tricks or trips to use <clears throat> So, alright, let's wait for all the others. So we have all synced up, pretty much. Oh, that's good. Uh, so yeah, the first one is going to be the scout camp. And then we scout the surrounding areas. What we want to find is the lore, so we can get the uh, Warcraft as soon as possible uh, then we want to get yeah bootcutter warrior camp and the house so we keep going uh, warrior camp so we can actually take down wolves and get uh, 50 military xp that we need for our military lore we are going for the guardian tree because that will give us two military xp per tower up to plus 10 uh, so we need 5 towers in total for the maximum benefit and we are going for the Warcraft lore so that lore will give us 1 fame and 1 lore per military experience that we gather so because we have the towers we get plus 2 fame and plus 2 lore just passively having it uh, it's about pretty much um four no like two gold for ten lore this top keep and uh, i mean i would take uh, that trade every time right you just top keep two gold okay here we can see on the bottom left that we let our villager die and that allowed us to get the guardian tree already uh, so you get the uh, military xp by killing wolves you get 15 per wolf uh, if your warrior dies, then you get plus 10. If your villager dies, then you get plus 5. So here we killed two wolves, that's 30. And then villager, and then another wolf came, and then boom, 50. And then we built the uh, scout camp. And we already start to scout, so we don't need to over scout. Uh, just to scout the uh, nearby areas that you have. And let the uh, tower do the rest of the work. So you don't have to over overthink. So the first game we have no lore, no sheep, no ruins. We did get the sheep, but we are not going to use them. And I scouted more because I didn't get any of the extra wolves. So we only have one wolf to go off. Uh, because we don't have any lore, then we can wait for the wolves to attack us two times. Then make a warrior, kill the wolf, and then go and... Sacrifice the warrior, and then we should have 55 meter XP, and we get the tower towers up. So, yeah, the bottom right one here we had the shipwreck to start out with, so we already have like food going, and our economy is just booming pretty much. Uh, <laughs> here on the first one, we're just gonna be uh, having a fun time and uh, starving, like just don't have anything we just have to wait there's nothing nothing we can really do about it and you will see me clearing early game a lot with one warrior so like like we're just gonna have one warrior go and uh, clear wolves by just uh, using the game mechanics that is with the dice that you go in and your attack animation it doesn't have to finish but the attack will go through so if you are good with Cancelling that kind of animation, you will just your warrior will never get hit, but uh, it's quite uh, hard to do it 
uh, reliably all the time. So about the dice, you would prefer to have five dice if you can, because then you can build uh, five hours to get uh, maximum benefit out of it, to get plus ten going. But also staying on four is not too big of a problem. Like just stay at four, and once you get your fifth tile, then build the fifth tower. Nothing to worry about. Um, going out of your way, like you are wanna gonna get uh, tiles that are next to you, and then maybe one more tile, but you don't wanna go and expend like the third tile of from your main. It's gonna be very hard to clear, and usually it's not gonna be worth it. So you're just tower extending to just play it safe. <clears throat> And our gold income, we would prefer to have sailors as much as possible. So here we are just pulling the towers now. 801 winter. We don't still have the Warcraft, Warcraft because we don't have a Loremaster. So it just takes a bit of time. Now my camera is actually in the way there of the units. That's too bad. Okay, so yeah, we got the war Warcraft going. Uh, I think yeah, we're like behind one lore here. We already here have quite a lot more lore. Also, can I make this smaller so we can see this? And same here. One hundred sixty, one hundred twenty, one hundred twenty, and or two hundred ten, two hundred and ten, two hundred ten, two hundred ten, and one hundred sixty. So yeah, without uh, lore, we're just gonna <coughs> be slower by quite a lot. That one lore means sharp axes, and I forgot to go over the lore tree, so. Let's go over it right now. So the lore tree is actually quite easy. You don't have to really think about it. It only depends like how greedy you want to go. Uh, you're gonna go for the Warcraft bottom tree first. And once you got the Warcraft, then you can decide. If you want to go already for military, you can go for military, but uh, I would prefer to go for the top tree and just be as greedy as you can. You get sharp axes, which will produce you a lot more wood. Uh, colonization, you probably want this anyway if you want to force fame victory. So you just have to colonize tiles. You need to get 12 tiles because the fame is not an issue. The fame you will have, that's not the problem. And then city builder is just the usual good macro lore to have. Uh, the way you want to use the city builder is that uh, you only uh, develop the main tile where you have all the gold production if you have like uh, the first game going on we have nothing we're struggling so you just have one developed tile then you get the altar and then you start developing other tiles or you just save up gold to get the cheap and yeah for the blessing you can take the yours yours blessing usually but if you have two stone, you can get away with getting the Plaid's Blessing first. That's only if you have two stone and you're mining the stone. Like we're doing here. We got the Happiness Blessing on game 3. Uh, because we are have two stones and we are just mining them both. So this should be fine. We don't really need the Iron. The Iron we would need for Chief. And to get the second blessing quite fast enough anyway but yeah we are in need for the chief sailors and then for the axe servers pretty much so that would be 25 no 30 right uh five five that's 10 and plus chief yeah 25 so that's not much iron at all that you need <clears throat> uh, 
and going over anything else uh, then good thing to keep in mind is that if you really are stuck you can always get two warriors and go kill a bear like that's what you can do but it will take down your gold so uh, it's not really that good but if you're going for a die that has like ruins or sheep then it's probably worth it because from ruins you get your gold back that you used on the warriors not the problem and i mean that's gonna be my fifth tile so we get a fifth tower there and yeah i'm not sure what else to say like all right there we go there's our first altar down like the altar timing is gonna be in ada one you want to get it down in ada one if you get it down later then you have done something wrong and messed up uh, because the later you get the altar, the worse it's gonna be. Uh, after the altar, it's up to you if you want to get the chief. I would recommend getting the chief because chief is a chunky unit and can tank a lot. Uh, the military will just be extra wars and whatever we can have to tank because the extra upgrade is just bollocks. It's insane. So like aggressive gameplay is definitely recommended. In team games, this build is sadly too slow, but in twirls and free for all, you are quite safe. Uh, you have towers, like <laughs> if you see an enemy with tower, you usually don't want to attack into that, right? And especially early on, the population is very sacred, to say the least, in Ada 1. So if you just lose all of them, it's gonna be a long time before you actually get your population back. You don't have the economy and the lore set up to get them back fast. So yeah, just attacking early is usually quite bad. Unless it's a team game, then yeah, you can just use some crazy rushes, not a problem. Uh, and yeah, the altar and the first game with no lore it goes down in either one winter. That's probably the timing you can have. If you don't get any sheep ruins or shipwreck to start it. Uh, for the lore master, I only keep the lore master until I get the third lore, the Warcraft, and then I take the lore master away and have him focus on wood, stone, gold, whatever else there is. I don't know, Chad, do you have anything to ask? Because I don't have anything in my mind that we should cover. Uh, the cool thing about this build is that you can get easy fame victory, but you also don't mind if you sustain Warband because of the Military training lore. Idle military units in your territory gain meter XP, so you pretty much gain even more fame and lore because of uh, Warcraft. And yeah, you would just sustain them. Like, sustaining army should not be a problem for you because your economy is already that good. Ah yeah, and about taking the like the fort floors, like you probably want to get unstoppable as fast as possible, but you can really mix that up. You can get medicine, hearthstone, shiny happy people, monster slayer, whatever you want. You can get like few spare lords because your lore income is just insane, like. If you go here, you can see it's plus 23 and we don't have any lore master. The only thing we have going for us is four sailors, and that's it. The economy, gold economy, if you have four sailors, that's enough. You don't need any more. Like, we don't have to focus on getting more gold. That should already be enough. Just make army and start harassing your opponent. 
Uh, does this threat can be countered by any plan? In team games, if you rush, then yes. In free for all and well, I myself don't see a counter to this currently. So probably Shari games are gonna change this. Uh, when they're gonna change this, I'm gonna take a guess that it's gonna be available for like a week before they actually make any changes. That usually seems the way they deal with something if they have something broken. But maybe we get surprised and it will get uh, done nerfed earlier. And if it's not in a week, then it's gonna be three months of uh, this shenanigans. Or even more, depending on when the next patch is gonna come out. And yeah, they don't usually change anything in the middle of the season. So we'll have to look and see. Uh, there are of course some other shenanigans you can do. You can have a fast uh, squirrel victory, a uh, special victory condition. Uh, in team games, uh, the Hellheim is very fast victory condition, if you just go and clear it. So there are some things that can be done, but those are only in team games where the games go very fast. Free throw and 12s where the game is probably usually gonna last longer. Yeah, I mean, what can you do against the passive income that just keeps increasing over time? With uh, strong units and a strong chief. You can't read well, your economy is in shambles. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. So here, Daxter was just, all right, let's go back. Yeah, the opponent gave up, but I will focus on this one. Look at these guys, they are nearly well, one is half dead, but the way they're attacking, the attack speed is just insane. And this was two extra wars going against two warriors that were on the edge, and then population just came and they, yeah, just destroyed two warriors and two or four villagers. Like, geez, that's insane, in my opinion. Uh, Guardian Batch is uh, bait win. I mean, yeah, it's definitely the way to win, but uh, I they <laughs> say it's bait win because Ox Clan is not free for everyone. You have to play DLC for it, and they will definitely nerf this. So, uh, depends how much you have fun, right? If 8 hours of uh, using box feels fun, then go for it. If not, then don't. You could also pick the third uh, tree, but it's gonna leave you... Uh, the military tree. It's gonna leave you more vulnerable uh, to attacks, and you won't have enough space. Like, you don't have any towers, and you have no space to actually build your iconic building, so the Guardian Tree is definitely the way to go. And really, like, the turret doesn't really give you any benefits to use it. Like, yeah, you might get, like, cheaper army, 7 gold per something, but, I mean, it should not matter in the late game if you make 10 units and uh, save... Uh, 70 gold like it's just not that worth it rather you have plus one armor so your army tanks better or you just have some military xp militia units that help you defend uh, 
You can go over all the um, stats. <clears throat> but yeah, I currently say that this is the way to win in 12s. And with that, I mean, we can keep looking at this game. Uh, this game, I did make a few changes you could have done. But yeah, you will see in a second what's going to happen. <clears throat> so the thing is that you just need a little bit way too much food to get everything. But there we go, done. So, like, fame victory, Ada tree. It uh, it's better to attack your opponent than go for the fame victory. Just get tax towers, upgrade them, and attack your opponent. But they really didn't have a upgraded scout camp, and they did mine more stone. So, I decided to just try to yolo uh, for the fame victory. And my opponent did the same. If he was going to attack me, I probably would have lost that game. And so yeah, thanks for watching. I um, hope you have fun playing the build. Take care. Bye-bye.